Robert Gruler here. I'm a criminal defense attorney, and today we're talking about the new Netflix movie, Cuties. It was released on September 9, 2020, and many people are asking a lot of serious questions about this film. Is it exploiting children? Is it sexual exploitation of a minor? Is it child pornography? Pretty good questions and a lot of concerns that are floating around the internet. So today we're going to talk about it. Of course, we are talking about this film here. It was Cuties. The image on the left is the original promotional poster that was put up there by Netflix. After the public outcry, they switched the, phot uh, the actual photography over to what you see on the right. That was the new promotional poster. And I think that kind of calmed some people down for the time being, but the film was just released yesterday and the reactions are not so good. So this is a clip from Matt Walsh. I took a screenshot of this. He is on Twitter. He is a blue check mark and he's got a pretty decent sized following. Here's what he has to say about it. He says, Netflix released that Cuties movie about twerking 11-year-olds. Fuller clips of the film are now circulating. It's way worse than I thought, and I thought it would be extremely bad. Very explicit sexual dancing, girls grabbing themselves, crotch shots, etc. These are children. And so, uh, of course, there's stuff to be concerned about that, right? We don't want 11-year-old girls being sexually exploited or films that are pseudo the popular culture media. We don't want those circulating around the internet and certainly not being published by one of the biggest studios, one of the biggest enterprises in online media, Netflix. So sounds concerning, but what, what, what is actually really the problem? Well, I took a look at it. There's another individual by this name, Ghost Jim. He posted an actual clipping a video recording of the video itself and he says Netflix just released the controversial cuties and it's worse than you could imagine make no mistake Netflix is at the forefront of sexualizing children and normalizing pedophilia and I will tell you this I watched about 10 seconds of that clip you can see he clipped about a minute 54 out of the video and it picks up very early on in this bizarre scene where one girl is filming another girl who's doing twerking and sort of dry humping the ground and she's 11 and she's you know kind of doing one of the cutesy little things with her her fingers and it is uncomfortable to watch i lasted about 10 seconds and i just said all right that's enough of that uh, not an ideal genre for me anyways dance movies any of those uh the last dance or any of those things i just i'm not the ideal demographic for that so i wouldn't ordinarily be interested in this and i couldn't even last about five ten seconds if you want to check it out for yourself we're not going to replay any of it here but if you do want to check it out you can go over to ghost jim and he's got a clipping of the video now that being said, what are some of the big online aggregator websites? What are they saying? So on IMDb, there is a parental guidance, a parental uh, guide, sort of you know content warning uh, section on their website, and you can see what people are posting here. So one says, parental warning, during one of the many highly sexualized and erotic dance scenes that purposefully exploit and objectify numerous scantily clad underage girls, one of the female child dancers lifts up her cropped top to fully display her bare breast. This is lawfully defined as pedophilia and can be extremely distressing to many viewers. So the reason why I wanna go through this is because I want to identify the type of activity, the type of conduct that's taking place in the film itself. Then we can identify and match that conduct with the statutes, with some legal actual statutes that would criminalize certain types of conduct. And we can see, is the stuff in the video, does it match up? Is it criminal conduct according to the laws? So we're gonna talk about some of what the other viewers have seen in the film, then we'll just apply it to the statutes. So let's go back to what people are saying about the film. Another one, trigger warning. An 11 year old girl watches a female rap music video where a naked woman role play through dance, both heterosexual and lesbian sex acts. An 11 year old female dance group then mimics these sexual moves via via on themselves and on each other while the camera zooms in on their sexual body parts as they erotically writher. This can be highly distressing for many viewers. Another one says female breast nudity of a minor during an erotic dance scene and lengthy excessive close-up shots of breasts, bums, and spread crotches of scantily clad 11 year old girls during numerous sexualized dance routines. And finally, a, a pair of tight leather pants on an 11 year old girl are forcefully pulled down while on camera, well, the camera focuses in on her partly exposed bum. 
So that is what people are saying are in the film. As I said, I have not watched it, but I'm going to guess that that is all pretty accurate. There's numerous people who are sort of admitting that there's a similar theme running through the film, multiple reports from multiple people. So that's what we're talking about now. Let's take a look at the statutes. Let's look at the actual statutes. What does the law say about this particular charge? Well, we're going to look to Arizona law. We've got Arizona statutes because we practice out of Arizona. I will tell you that many of these laws are very similar across the board. They, they are, are criminalizing the same behavior. Really, the only difference is between the different states that I've seen. You know, all of this conduct is essentially illegal across the board, right? Uh, being in possession of child pornography is illegal in every state. There isn't one particular state that is sort of a safe haven for child predators or child pornography or rapists or anything like that. So the laws are sort of similar across the board. We're just going to use Arizona laws to show you how this all works. And so let's dive into it. So the first party that we need to talk about is going to be Netflix. Netflix is the parent company. They are the ones who are responsible for producing this and then publishing it and then transmitting it to all the different people throughout the country and throughout the world. And so do they have any criminal liability or, or any criminal culpability? Or what about the filmmakers or the directors or the people who put this stuff together? Are they criminally liable for any of this stuff? Well, what does the law say? In Arizona, we have a statute. It's called 13... 3552. It looks like this. And you're going to see here that it says we're talking about commercial sexual exploitation of a minor. So commercial sexual exploitation of a minor. And as we go through some of these, you're going to see that at the very top, it, it says here that a person commits sexual exploitation of a minor by knowingly, and here's point number one, using, employing, inducing or coercing a minor to engage in or assist others to engage in exploitive exhibition or other sexual conduct for the purposes of producing any visual depiction or live act depicting such, such conduct. We're talking about in that one specifically sex conduct. Okay. The other one under part two is even more appropriate. I think it's even more applicable. We're talking about the areola or the nipple of the female breast being exposed for financial or commercial gain. So in part one, we're talking about sexual conduct. In part two, we're talking about imagery. If they're producing imagery to expose the areola or the nipple of the female breast for financial or commercial gain, that is criminalized behavior. Number three, permitting a minor to be under, uh, to be, who is under the, a person's custody to go do these things is also going to be criminal. So we're criminalizing parents or guardians who let their children be exploited. We're also talking about trafficking. So if this is something where uh, the, the major enterprise is actually trafficking kids, like moving actors from one state to another or one country to another, that could open them up to some criminal culpability there. So you can see here, all of this is you know, just by the statute itself, if you, if you believe that the conduct that Netflix put out there with these young girls twerking and showing their breasts and showing their crotch and their buttocks and all, and all sorts of things, if you think that that fits this statute, you can, make, you can be the judge of that case. You don't need a lawyer to tell you whether that matches or not. If using, employing, persuading, enticing, inducing, or coercing a minor to engage in or assist others to engage in exploitive exhibition or other sexual conduct for the purpose of producing any visual depiction such uh, d depiction or live act depicting such conduct that is essentially exactly what Netflix was doing but you can certainly be the judge of that now this is the commercial exploitation of a minor for sexual exploitation of a minor statute under Arizona law. This is typically used for child pornography cases, people who are literally uh, having children or, or minors engage in sexual activities and recording them and then pushing that stuff out on the internet. They are producing child porn. This is the statute that normally criminalizes them. My point here is that if you read the statute, you can easily make the argument that Netflix and the conduct, the, the, the imagery that we see in this video is falls perfectly within the purview of this statute. When we look further down, we're going to see, let me get rid of myself here. We're going to see that this is a, a major, seriously, seriously major crime. It's 
It's called a dangerous crime against children. We call them DCAC crimes here in Arizona. It's important to also note under subsection B that ISPs, so internet service providers, are going to be exempt from this type of stuff. So your Cox provider or your Quest provider or Comcast or whoever you use, they're not going to be in trouble for transmitting the images. But Netflix could be. They're the ones who produce this content and they're the ones that distributed it. So if it goes from Netflix across the internet and the internet is not liable for this stuff and it lands in your home on your desk or in your computer or on your tablet or on you know on your on your iPhone or whatever that is because of the nature of the conduct is there any argument that you are in possession of this child pornography or anything that would be culpable under the law well the Arizona statutes go on further and we can see here in this next category 133553 this is the sexual exploitation of a minor statute so the previous statute was talking about commercial sexual exploitation that's the producers here we're talking about just the receivers so this is the people who are just uh, sort of obtaining and using this stuff could they potentially be responsible for some criminal culpability here. We go back to the statute. So we see here, a person commits sexual exploitation of a minor by knowingly recording, filming, photographing, developing, duplicating, anything where a minor is engaged in exploitive exhibits or other sexual conduct. Part number two here, I think, is the one that's most applicable. Distributing, transporting, exhibiting, receiving, possessing any visual depiction in which a minor is engaged in exploitive exhibition or other sexual conduct. And that is essentially what we're talking about here, right? You're receiving imagery over the internet of children being engaged in exploitive exhibition or other sexual conduct. You're knowingly receiving it, it you're in possession of it while it's floating across your TV screen, and that is what the statute says. That's it. This is the statute. I didn't write the statute. This is what we have in Arizona. If you are convicted of this, then it's important to know what the penalties would be. Again, because these children in this film are under the age of 15. They are 11 years old. Uh, that's the that's that's the act the age of the actresses uh, who are portrayed in the movie. Now, whether all of them are 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, it doesn't really matter. If they're under the age of 15, then they are going to be punished by what's called dangerous crimes against children statutes. Those exist in Arizona, and they significantly penalize what we're talking about here. So let's take a look at it. The actual maximum penalty for this type of violation for commercial sexual exploitation of a minor is going to be the 10 year minimum sentence you can go to prison for. 10 years is the minimum. Commercial sexual exploitation is 10 years minimum. It also applies to regular sexual exploitation of a minor. It's also going to be 10 years, 10 years in prison for this type of offense. Now, you certainly would say the people who are doing this stuff deserve a hard, harsh penalty. No disagreements with you there. But is Netflix, are they contributing to this type of thinking or to this type of acceptance of these types of images? Is this making this a little bit more normal to look at young people this way? Sort of feels like that to me. Now, if you go through the actual statutes, you're going to see that this is what the sentencing chart looks like. So if you've been convicted of a crime like this, this is what you're looking at. This is the dangerous crimes against children sentencing statutory range. And we're going to go back here. We're going to hit that on. You're going to see when we look at the actual statutes, what we're talking about is being in this category right here. It's under subsection D, the dangerous crimes against children. We're talking about 10 years as a minimum sentence, 17 years as the presumptive sentence, 24 years in prison as the maximum sentence. It's a middle level of the road, sexual exploitation of a minor, commercial sexual exploitation of a minor. So very serious charges and, and people are up in arms about it as they should be. You know, the, the image that I saw uh, very, very briefly that was posted on Twitter was not, not appropriate. It was uncomfortable to watch. I'm seeing a big split happen on the social media worlds. There's a lot of the, you know, the artists and the people who think that this has a higher message and a higher meaning are sort of praising the film. I think on Rotten Tomatoes and on uh, Metacritic, there's, there's, you know, good reviews that are flowing out. This is more than just this. There's, you know, there's a deeper message there. Uh, I don't, I don't, 
I don't see it. Of course, I didn't watch the film, so you can call me uh, you know, ignorant on that, or maybe I'm discussing something that I shouldn't be talking about because I haven't actually seen the film. Not going to take that argument. Going to go ahead and pass on the film. I'll watch other, what other people have to say about it, and I'll use them as my informant uh, and tell me you know, what, what their opinions are, and we can make judgments on it. But you saw the statutes. I did not write those statutes. Those are pulled directly from Arizona law, probably mirror a lot of the same laws in your home state. So you have to ask yourself, what are you going to be watching this weekend? Probably should not be cuties.